Hello, hello everyone. Hope everyone's doing good today. I have two stenocereus that look like they're going to bloom tonight. The one right I'm showing right here is a stenocereus gumosus. And I have a stenocereus prenusus that looks like it's going to bloom as well, which is this one. As you can see, it's a look like it's already ready to burst open. As you can see, the Stenocereus gumosus already started to bloom. And um, I'm trying to cross pollinate the Stenocereus gumosus with the Stenocereus prunusus. But unfortunately, the Stenocereus prunusus is still taking a little bit longer to bloom. And um, I actually have to work at night, I work graveyard shift. And well, hopefully it opens up before I leave to work. While I wait for the Stenocereus prunusus to bloom, I have the Stenocereus gumosus that already bloomed and um, I could collect some of the pollen, but I'm gonna collect the pollen for I could do the cross pollinate and for I can store some of this pollen in a container that I'm going to put in the refrigerator which I have some of the stuff here which I'll talk about later on in the morning when my when the when the pollen is dried up I could put it inside the little containers and I could use that for I could cross pollinate some of my other stennis areas which I have here that are going to bloom soon and hopefully I could use it to bloom my Stenocereus prunusus as well. This is the bowl that I'll be using to collect the pollen and a paintbrush. So the part right there in the center, that's called the stigma, which is like the male part of the flower. But I'm actually gonna collect the pollen from around the stigma which are called the uh, antlers. So I'm just gonna drop them inside this bowl. Oh, hold on, let me, I forgot the Q-tip. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop them, drop all the pollen inside. And if some of the antlers fall down into the bowl, that's okay, that's actually kinda good because um, with these Stenocereus flowers, they don't really have that much um, pollen. So if you get some of the, the antlers in there, you could use that to pollinate the flower as well because the antlers will have some, some pollen on them. So now I'm just gonna drop everything. So I do wanna take advantage of this one flower that I have that I bloom. I really don't have that many flower is blooming right now so I do want to collect as much pollen as I can and then um, this pollen that I'm dropping in this bowl I'm going to um, put it inside my house overnight and let it just dry up sometimes it has a little bit of water in it I guess I think it's probably like a little bit of nectar so I just let that dry up and then in the morning I could put it in the refrigerator which I'll show you the process when I get home from, from work. Well, good morning. I just got home from work and as you can see, my Stenocereus gumosus still has a very nice flower. But unfortunately, my Stenocereus prunusus did not bloom, which I'm actually kind of surprised. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to cross pollinate them today. But I do have a plan B, which is I have some Stenocereus stellatus pollen, which I collected this pollen in March 19, which is only five days old. So this pollen was inside the refrigerator. So it's actually real cold right now. So I'm going to wait a little while. Just let this pollen kind of warm up. Have it more into like a room temperature. 
and then I can apply it to the stigma of the flower. Okay, so a couple of minutes passed by. This pollen should be good to go. So now I'm just gonna grab some with this uh, paintbrush. And I'm getting some well, pollen and some of the antlers as well. Now I'm just gonna apply it on the stigma. Just rub it on the stigma. I'm gonna get some more. You see the little antlers? You can just put the antlers on the stigma. Let's see if you guys can see a little bit better. Just tap it or rub it on the stigma. And that's how I cross pollinate my stenocereus. So here I have the pollen for my stenocereus gumosis and it's ready for me to store this in the refrigerator for later use. So here are some of the supplies that I'll be using. So first I have the um, silica gel Dexican bags. Um, I got all this on Amazon. So I went online and bought all of this. Just in case you can't find it. So I'll be using one, two, three, and four. And I'll be using some leak proof specimen cups. This is the cup right here. And here's the lid. So you want to make sure it's leak proof. You don't want any water getting in it. Now I'll be using two sizes of Ziploc bags. This one right here is a quart, and you have to make sure it's um, for freezer. You see right there it says freezer. You wanna make sure it says that. And then um, this other Ziploc bag is a gallon. Make sure it says freezer on it as well. So now I'm ready to put the pollen inside the leak proof specimen cup. You wanna make sure you get all the pollen inside the cup. Right here, I'm just gonna rub some of the pollen that got stuck to the plate. And just kinda scoop it inside the cup. So now that I finished putting the pollen inside the cup, now I can put the lid on. Just make sure that it's nice and tight. Now the next step is to use the quart size Ziploc bag. I'm just going to open it and put the cup inside. So now I'm just going to grab two of the little Dexican bags, put them inside, one in the front and one in the back. So now you try to take out as much air as, as you can from the bag and just seal it.
So now I'm going to use my one gallon Ziploc bag. So I'm pretty much just going to double bag. So I'll put it inside and then I'm going to use two of the desiccant bags. Put them on the side and then make sure I take um, as much air as possible from the bag. And just make sure you seal it. So now um, I would just have to label this and put the date on it. I'll write it right here. So this pollen, like I want to use it in a couple of days from now, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. Now, if I wanted to use this pollen, say a couple of months from now, then I'll put it in the freezer. Now, if I want to put the pollen inside the freezer, first I have to put the pollen in the refrigerator for at least three days just let it cool down slowly and then i can put it in the freezer well i hope you guys like this video of me cross pollinating and storing my pollen inside the refrigerator don't forget to hit the like thank you